All right, my friends, look above your heads. There is an animal spotting guide up there. That's going to help you identify some of the animals we might be seeing out on the reserve today. Now, we probably won't get to see all of those animals, but we do usually have some pretty good luck, so keep your eyes open. If you are taking pictures, I recommend a sports or an action setting on those cameras if you have one. We're not going to be able to stop for all of the animals, and some of them will not stop for us. Now, when we do stop, it's only going to be for a few seconds at a time and only in certain places. Have those cameras out and ready. Now, this first part of the reserve we're heading into is the Little Attorney Forest. And here in the forest, the animals do have natural markings and colorations that help them camouflage from their predators. So let's see if we can find anything. Now, it does actually look like up here to the left, it's really hard to see. There is a bongo back there. Now, bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest. That's because they're rarely seen, and rightfully so. They love to hide behind the trees and the bushes. Now, bongos do have some pretty sloped back horns that helps them run really fast through the brush. It also helps to ensure they don't get caught up in the brush while they're running. Now, it does look like there's a black rhino out there to the left-hand side. Now, there are also some greater kudu up here to the right-hand side on top of the hill. We'll talk about them after we're done talking about the rhino. We're going to come up here and stop and see the rhino. Now, unfortunately, it is becoming harder and harder to find black rhinos because they are being poached for their horns. Now, their horns are believed to have a medicinal value, but they actually have no value at all. They're made out of keratin, the same thing that's in our fingernails and hair. Now, because of the poaching, there's less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the world, which is why they're so hard to find. That one on that side is a boy. Yeah. Now, if you take a look at these greater kudu out here, there's actually one right there. You'll see that they don't have any horns on top of their heads. Now, that means they are female greater kudu. Now, only the male kudu do have horns on their heads. They have the longest horns out of all of the antelope reaching about 71 inches in length. They're also the second tallest antelope here on the reserve, reaching about 55 inches at the shoulder. Now, it's actually not looking like we're gonna find any more animals on this side of the forest, so we're gonna head on down to the Safi River. Now, the Safi River is my favorite place to go looking for hippos. Now, hippos are among the largest and most dangerous animals here in Africa. At birth, they weigh up to about 85 pounds, and as adults, they can weigh up to 5,000 pounds. I actually did see one in the water down there to the right. It was a little hard to see, so we're going to come up a little further and see if we can find any on the left here. Looks like there might be one down there in the middle, so we're going to go up here. Now, hippos do spend the majority of their days submerged in the water, only really coming out to feed at night. They can stay fully submerged for about eight minutes at a time. They'll come up for air and go right back under. We're going to stop right here. Now, hippos do know how to swim through the water, but they actually prefer to walk along the bottom. You can actually see this one walking along there. Now, that's because they are very, very dense, and sometimes it's just pretty hard for them to float. Now, those great birds out there on the island are pink backed pelicans. They get that name from the pink coloration of their feathers during their mating season. Jumbo Warden. A little further up here, there are some Nile crocodiles down there. They're in the water and on the island. Now, Nile crocodiles are cold-blooded animals. They don't sweat. So to keep themselves cool, they do like to open their jaws for some pretty long periods of time. Now, their jaws are very, very strong. They can crush up to 2,000 pounds worth of weight per square inch. That comes really handy during dinner time, which we're not sticking around for, so we're going to get out of here. Now 
It does actually look like we're heading out of the Forest and River area and into the savanna, one of my favorite parts of the reserve. And the very first thing we're going to see here on the savanna is this baobab tree out to the right hand side of the truck. It does look like it's been uprooted and planted back upside down. That's because they are leafless about nine months out of the year, only really getting leaves during the rainy season. And they're also known as the upside down tree or the tree of life, and they can live for up to 2,000 years. Now, the savanna is home to some of Africa's most popular animals, including lions, giraffes, elephants, and zebras. I do see quite a few giraffes down here, so we're going to try to get a better look at them and see what other animals we can find along the savanna. Now, giraffes are the tallest animals in the world, ranging from 16 to 20 feet tall. At birth, they're about 6 feet tall. There are about nine different subspecies of giraffes, and the particular one you see out here on the reserve is a Maasai giraffe. We can tell that because of their spot pattern. It's a little more splotchy than other giraffes. Now, it does look like out here to the left hand side, these are not hyenas, they're actually African wild dogs. Now, they're also known as painted dogs. They are the most successful hunters here in Africa. That's because they will chase their prey until it falls flat from exhaustion. Now, to put that into perspective, lions catch their prey about 40% of the time. These guys will catch their prey about 90 to 95% of the time. They are pack hunters and they usually hunt in packs of between 9 to 15. Now, each dog's coat is unique to them, just like a human fingerprint is unique to us. A little further out there to the left-hand side, there's some sable antelope out there. There's actually a giraffe running towards us out to the right-hand side. Oh, sable antelope are the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. They all have a brown fur color, but the males tend to be a little darker, ranging from dark brown to almost jet black. Uh, you may have noticed these orange cone structures sticking out of the ground all over the savanna. Those are termite mounds. Now, termite mounds are made out of dirt, saliva, and dung. They're about as hard as concrete. Elephants like to use them as scratching posts, and then when they're worn down enough, small animals like antelope will stand on top of them to watch out for predators. Now, crossing the road in front of us, that is the Patterson's Eland. Now, the Patterson's Eland are the tallest antelope here on the reserve. A male Patterson's Eland can stand about six feet tall at the shoulder. Now out there to the left hand side, that's an Ancoli cattle that's walking towards us out there. Uh, Ancoli cattle do have some very long horns. Their horns can be about three to four feet long each.